Today is one of those palpable moments in our lives and experiences that movies are created for, certain stories are written for, hearts long for. Today can be the day can be the beginning of something new and different and transformative, or it can just be another Sunday morning. It's not all that different than it was for Jesus and his disciples over 2,000 years ago. As you've gathered by now, today is Palm Sunday in the church, the, the day that we remember and that we celebrate our Savior triumphantly rode into Jerusalem on a donkey with the crowds throwing their cloaks on the ground, waving their palm branches, and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means... Good, y'all were paying attention to Miss Kim. <laughs> it means save us. Or even hear our prayers. As Jesus told his disciples where to go find the donkey on the first day of the week, he knew exactly how the week was going to go. Being that he was God in the flesh, he was God incarnate. Yet the Gospels also speak to Jesus' humanity, 100% God, 100% man, so he may have known exactly how the week ahead of him was going to go, or maybe at the same time not No. The first day of the new week, as Jesus mounted the donkey, a beast of burden, and looked towards the center of Jerusalem, he most certainly began something that was going to be new and different and transformative. The disciples thought they knew what was taking place. And the crowds obviously thought they knew. But in the end, everyone rejected him and deserted him as he suffered and died on the cross, except for a small few people including his mother and maybe a couple of the disciples that had followed him the past three years. Yet in that moment, the week that started with his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, in that moment on the cross, he completed the new and the different and the transformative work that he had been working from the very beginning. When God's creation, man and woman, Adam and Eve, took that fateful bite of the fruit in the tree of the Garden of Eden. That's why today has such a feel in our lives and experiences. Today, at peace especially, we will commission our newest confirmants who have been learning and growing in the faith that was given to them in their baptism, that has been fostered and encouraged by their parents and the community of disciples around them, you, and today they begin a new part of their own lives and experiences as disciples of Jesus, as they are sent by us, their fellow disciples in this community, to go and take the good news of life and salvation in Jesus Christ with them. Today, on Palm Sunday, we are sending them as gospel planters in their daily lives to be that good news presence in the lives of those that God places around them. Today begins a journey for them that will certainly be transformative. But we don't always know how to respond to these moments and experiences, do we? Sometimes we like to respond like the crowds and we celebrate and we get excited and, and we get anxious. Other times we act like the disciples and we nervously keep going about our business, waiting to see what the next move is going to be. Today I challenge us to do something different in the moment. I challenge us to be, to be still, to be present, and maybe to just breathe it all in. There's something different. That happens when we take a moment, isn't there? When we actually give our hearts a chance to begin to connect with our brains. And we begin to have a different perspective. Go with me to Psalm 111. Psalmist writes, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright in the congregation. 
For great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works and giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. It's interesting as the psalm wasn't necessarily written in response to an event or to an experience that occurred in the life of God's people like some of the other psalms that we've studied. This isn't a psalm written to enliven a downtrodden heart that's struggling through pain or doubt or grief. This is a psalm written for the ongoing, continuous worship life of God's people. Much like some of the songs that we sing in worship today. One of my favorite hymns we sung last week, Praise to the Lord Almighty. And it's one of my favorite hymns because it serves as a reminder in every season of my life and faith that there is always a reason, there is always a purpose to sing our Savior's praises. It's at the back of the hymnal, so it's not a hymn specified to a certain season of the church here, and it's not a hymn trying to express the full narrative of the gospel. It's a hymn of praise. That with the psalmist in Psalm 111 leads me to give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Some of the hardest nights of parenting when the kids just won't go to sleep, I would hum praise to the Lord Almighty. And whether this is your first Palm Sunday to celebrate or you've been coming to worship on this day for decades, that's what the week ahead leads us into. It is something new. It is something different, something transformative. Because in this week, we get to experience again just how far our Savior's love will go for each and every one of us. The psalmist writes in verse 2, Great are the works of the Lord, and studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. For all of the experiences of God's people throughout the Old Testament, the Tower of Babel, the worldwide flood, the being freed from slavery in Egypt, entering and conquering the Promised Land, growing an incredible kingdom, being freed from exile, none of it, none of it compares to what Jesus did this week, starting with his triumphant entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. This is single-handedly the most transformative seven days of the world, next to maybe when God first created all of it. And we will end this week in darkness as we end our Good Friday worship in darkness, remembering that Christ was buried because he had died. But before that moment, he says something that changes the entire experience. Jesus says, it is finished. He wasn't talking about his own breath and his own life. He was talking about the bondage and the burden of our sinfulness. He was talking about your sinfulness and my sinfulness. He was talking about the power of Satan himself to lead us and to deceive us and to condemn us according to the weight of God's commands. Jesus was talking about our oppression and our struggle with addictions and our shame and our guilt. It is finished. 
This is such a moment in our life and experience because we know, at least in our minds, but I pray you know it in your heart as well, that today begins the final days of a journey that ends with you and me being set free from everything that tries to tell us that we are not. That we are not worthy, that we are not lovable, that we are not successful, that we are not anything. Because we will end this week remembering that each and every single one of us was worth the price of God coming from His throne in heaven to dwell among us. That each of us is worth the price of God to keep a covenantal promise that He had made to Adam and Eve in the garden. Each of us is worth the price of God to pay by coming to live amongst us, calling disciples to follow Him as He, as he showed the world what true love is. And He brought to life the worthless efforts of hypocrisy and relying on our own morality to earn God's love. Each of us is worth the price of our Savior's body and blood, hung upon a cross. And each of us is worth the final breath of our Savior to say, it is finished. So when we come together next week, I'll be here. I hope you will too. When we come together next week on Easter Sunday, we're not celebrating the old. We're actually celebrating the new. A new thing. That our Savior was not in the tomb on the first day of the new week. He was alive and He still is. And that which he finished as he hung on the cross no longer has power over you and me. Instead, as we have been set free in his death from the chains of our sinfulness, you and I are compelled. We are pushed. We are driven to go and tell as many people as possible that Christ is not dead, but he is alive. And in Him there is forgiveness, and there is life, and there is salvation. There is hope. Hosanna in the highest. Our Savior has come, and He has done incredible and marvelous, amazing, astonishing, surprising, bewildering, stunning, breathtaking, shocking, astounding. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright and the congregation because great are the works of the Lord and studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is His work and His righteousness endures forever. He has caused wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear Him he remembers His covenant forever. He has shown His people the power of His works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of His hands are faithful and just. All His precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent His redemption to His people. He has commanded His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Amen.